Thank you so much for checking out Learn Linux TV, your source for Linux related fun and learning. I just love making this content for you guys, but making such content isn't cheap. If you enjoy my content, please consider supporting me by becoming a patron. As a patron, you'll enjoy ad free versions of every video that I upload, and also, at specific tiers, you'll also enjoy early access to select videos before the rest of the world. But even if you're not able to support me by becoming a patron, no problem, there's other ways to help. You can simply click the like button on the videos that you enjoy that would help out. In addition to that, word of mouth helps as well. So if you're enjoying my content, please help spread the learning by telling your friends and coworkers about the channel. If you're looking for something to read, well, you're in luck, I write books. And you can check out my latest books at learnlinux.tv slash books. Are you looking for help for your Linux server related projects? Or are you a business that has a Linux related project that you're working on and you need another set of hands? Well, you're in luck. Go to learnlinux.tv slash request hyphen assistance. There you can check out my schedule and consider hiring me to help you out. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to class number eight, yes, eight, in the Proxmox course. I'm really excited to have you guys here. Thanks for checking out these videos in this series. I really appreciate that. In today's episode, what we're going to do is look into the concept of creating templates for our containers. I mean, we already did that with virtual machines, but you could do that with containers as well. And you know what? It's also pretty convenient. Now, to be fair, there's not nearly as many steps when it comes to creating a container, but I think setting up a template could still save you some time. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so in the previous video, I walked you guys through the process of creating a container, and we have our container right here. That's number 103 in my case. So just like I did with the virtual machine section of this course, I'm going to show you in this video how to convert this container into a template. As a spoiler, all you really have to do is right click on it and then convert it to a template. So video over, let's go on to the next one. But actually not so fast, there's more to it than that. There's a few things that we should do to make this process even better. Before I actually convert it into a template, what I wanna do instead is configure it a bit further to make the process even easier going forward. So here I am right here logged into that container. Just like I did with the process of creating a virtual machine, what I wanna do here is make sure that the container is fully updated. So to do that, I'm going to run sudo apt update, ampersand ampersand, sudo apt dist hyphen upgrade. I'll press enter. And as you can see here, there's quite a few packages that need to be updated. So I'm going to press enter and let it update everything. All right, so all the updates have been installed. So I'll clear the screen and we'll move on to the next step. So just like before, there's a few commands that I like to run and this will help alleviate some of the issues that you might run into in the future. So an easy command to start with is sudo app clean. And just like I did with the virtual machine section, this will essentially clean out the apt package database and things like that. And it's not going to make a huge difference, but you may as well save a little bit of space if you can. And that's all there is to it. There's no output, it's just that simple. To be on the safe side, we can run sudo apt and then auto remove. And in my case, that did absolutely nothing. But if you have any orphan packages, basically packages that were installed as a dependency of another package, and that particular dependency is no longer needed, this command will actually help you wipe that out. In my case, that doesn't actually benefit me at all, and that's because there's no orphan packages in my container. That's a good thing. Now, next, what we're going to want to do is go into the Etsy SSH directory, just like we did with the virtual machine creation process. We have SSH host keys here, and we definitely want them to be different. If we don't delete the host keys here, then every container that we create from the template will have the same host keys. That's not a good thing. 
that's going to cause a lot of confusion for your SSH client. So what I'm going to do is run sudo rm, and what I'm going to delete is ssh underscore host underscore star. So I want to delete every file that begins with the name ssh underscore host underscore. And what that's going to do is actually purge out all the SSH host keys. I'll press enter and we're done. Now at this point, we absolutely don't want to disconnect our SSH session. If we were to do that, we wouldn't be able to get back into our server. The SSH host keys are required in order to make an SSH connection. So I'll clear the screen. And another thing that I want to check is the Etsy machine ID. And right here we have our machine ID. Now, just like with the virtual machine that we created earlier, what we're going to want to do right here is wipe out this file. The machine ID is not something that we want to be the same on each container. It should be different on each container and also different on every virtual machine. So what I'm going to do is run sudo and then truncate. We'll do a size-s of zero. And what we're going to do is run that again slash etsy slash machine ID. Just like that, I'll press enter. So I think that's enough configuration. I'm going to run sudo and then power off. And that's going to shut down this container. And back here in Proxmox, we can see that it's not running. The icon actually turned gray and there's nothing here on the console. So what I'm going to do is just convert it to a template right now. And here's the option, I just right clicked on it. Pretty much the same idea when we walk through the process with a virtual machine. So I'll click Convert to Template. I'll say yes. I do want to convert this to a template. And we can actually see that the icon changed right here. It's similar to the icon here for the VM template. Kind of looks like a piece of paper beside a monitor right here. And now it looks like a piece of paper next to a box. A box, a container. I think you get the idea. So now I have a template that I can use to create containers with. So what I'm going to do is right click on it and then click clone. I'll leave it on 104, I think that's fine. I'll change it to a full clone. For the host name, I'll call it web server ct one. For target storage, I'll choose local LVM and that should be good enough. And now that that's created, I'll right click on it yet again. I'll clone it. And I'm going to give it a very similar host name. And there we go. All right, so now what I'm going to do is start each of these containers. And we'll give them both a moment to start. Actually, they should be started. Let me check the first one here. We have a login prompt. So let's log in. All right, so we created a container template and then we created two containers from that template. But there is one more thing that we should do on the containers to make sure that everything is okay. Now, what I'm going to do is SSH into one of those containers. And here's one of the containers. Now, when it comes to CloudInit, it's not actually supported when it comes to containers. When we set up the virtual machine, we installed CloudInit, and then after we did that, we enabled CloudInit in the GUI for Proxmox. But when it comes to containers, there's no such option. So in that case, we're going to need to improvise. After you create a container, what you'll need to do is reset the SSH host keys manually. So here we have the SSH host keys on this particular container. So what I'm going to do is run sudo and then rm. Be very careful with the rm command. And what I'm going to do is remove ssh underscore host underscore and then star. That's going to remove everything that has ssh and then host in the name. I'll press enter. Type in the super secret password and we should be good. Now at this point, don't log out of the server. We're going to want to regenerate the host keys before we go any further. And at least in the case of Ubuntu, that's pretty easy. I can run sudo, then dpkg hyphen reconfigure. And the package name for the SSH server is OpenSSH hyphen server. So what we're doing is we're essentially telling the package manager to regenerate the configuration for this particular package. 
And now the SSH host keys will be different between the two containers that I created. To be on the safe side though, what I'm going to do is log into the other container. So what I'm going to do is fetch the IP address, and here it is. It's actually the same IP address, except one number is different. So I'll change it to 201 at the end. And we're in. So what I'm going to do is just repeat the exact same process that we just went through with the other container. So I'll go into the Etsy SSH directory. I'm going to remove the host keys. And then regenerate the host keys. And there we are. So as you can see, we were able to set up two containers from the template that we created in this video. And even though we had one manual task, it wasn't so bad. Sure, we can automate that task because we can automate virtually anything in Linux. But in this case, that's beyond the scope because there's all kinds of extra things that we could do. But I think if we have it down to a couple commands where we manually regenerate the host keys, that's not the worst thing. If you do decide to automate the process of resetting the host keys on your end, go ahead and let me know in the comments below how you decided to go about doing that. I think that would be an interesting piece of homework for you guys. An extra credit assignment, if you will. Just think of it like a challenge. So, as you can see, creating templates for your containers is yet another really awesome feature of Proxmox. I'm really enjoying this series so far. I hope you guys are as well. And if you are, please click that like button. And I'll have the next episode in this series uploaded very soon. So keep your eye on the playlist, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.